greatest basketball players to never play in the NBA. The streets are teeming with talented former basketball players who were never able to make it to the NBA for various reasons. Financial concerns led several ballers to make the decision not to compete in the league. Back in the day, most NBA players made meager five-figure salaries. A few hoopsters' dreams have been transformed into nightmares as a result of untimely deaths. A few of the players discovered that they were lured to the hustler's lifestyle a little bit too much. Other stories are more optimistic. For example, a few foreign players decide to stay in their home countries and rack up the points rather than make the move to the United States. The NBA showcases some of the most talented athletes on the planet. Despite this, there was a period when the level of basketball played outside of the United States was nearly on par with that played in the United States. As a result, many players were never very interested in playing for an NBA team. In addition, throughout the years, there have been a few players who have been so good for their current teams that they haven't been interested in taking the chance on joining an NBA team and having to play a lesser role there. These players have stayed with their current teams because they don't want to risk their careers by accepting a lesser role. Others notoriously and foolishly made the decision to forego pursuing a professional job in favor of a life of crime and hustle because they believed that they could make more money this way. As a result, we've never gotten to see some of the greatest basketball players in history grace an NBA court. Today we'll give you the rundown on the top 10 greatest players who never got to suit up for the NBA. Let's play full court, baby. Your go-to channel for the most interesting basketball topics. Number 10. Sergio Yui. Accolades. The 2016 to 2017 EuroLeague MVP. Two-time Olympic medalist. Sergio Yui is a major reason why Real Madrid has recently been so successful. He is a genius at making plays and opening up lanes for his teammates. The jumper he brings up from deep is silky smooth, and he can utilize his body to wiggle through traffic and unsettled defenders. The NBA has shown interest in 30-year-old Sergio Yui, but he is content to rip it up with Real Madrid. Yui, who can play either guard position, is lightning fast and has a deadly three-point shot. He has been a mainstay for the senior Spanish national team and was named EuroLeague MVP in 2016-2017. His country has lately produced NBA guards Ricky Rubio and Jose Calderon. Yui has brought home two medals from the Summer Olympics for Spain, a silver in 2012 and a bronze in 2016. Although he was selected by the Nuggets with the 34th overall choice in the 2009 NBA Draft, and his draft rights were then acquired by the Rockets for a then astronomical sum of $2.25 million, he has instead decided to play his whole professional career at Real Madrid. Number 9. Lenny Cook Accolades 2000 Adidas ABCD MVP Lenny Cook was the player that truly held the position of being ranked higher than LeBron James when both were still in high school. A year older than James, Cook was a man-child who towered over James at six foot and six inches tall and was virtually unstoppable on the basketball floor. All of that changed on a single, momentous day while everyone was at the ABCD camp in 2001. Lenny's side came out on top against Carmelo's group, which means that Lenny and James will now face each other in a head-to-head -head matchup. During a time when LeBron's team was behind by two points, King James came up with a game-winning three-point shot that he put in Cook's face to win the game. LeBron outscored Lenny 24-9. That was the day that Cook first started going on the wrong path. He suffered a loss of self-assurance listened to the wrong people when they offered him advice and allowed himself to gain a significant amount of weight. The rest, as they say, is history. Number 8. Dejan White Magic Bodoraga Accolades 1996 Olympic Silver Medalist, 2-time EuroLeague MVP, 2002 FIBA World Cup MVP 
Even though Dejan Bodebraga is not a well-known name in the United States, he is considered a basketball legend on a global scale. A forward with a height of 6 foot 9 inches, he competed all over the world and dominated opponents in Italy, Spain, Greece, and the former Yugoslavia. The guy won the Most Valuable Player Award wherever he played, including twice in the EuroLeague and once in the FIBA World Cup in 2002. Every time Bodoraga came onto the floor, it was pretty much a given that he would score 20 points and hand out 5 assists. He was chosen by Sacramento in the second round of the 1995 draft. But Bodoraga never ended up playing in the NBA. Instead, he became known as the man in Europe and played professionally in Europe. At the 1996 Summer Olympics, he helped guide Yugoslavia to a silver medal. In the championship game, they were defeated by a powerful United States squad that included Reggie Miller and David Robinson. In 2007, White Magic announced his retirement. Number 7. Ronnie Fields Accolades Three-time Parade All-American, Consensus First Team All-American, third all-time leading scorer in Chicago Public League history. The 6'3 guard attended Farragut Academy in Chicago, where he played high school basketball alongside Kevin Garnett. He was a legend in the playgrounds of Chicago. Ronnie could easily leap out of the gymnasium with his 50-inch vertical. In high school, he not only scored 34 points a game, but he also grabbed 12 rebounds, dished out 4 assists, swiped 4 steals, and blocked 4 shots on average. No, that's not a typo. Ronnie was never given the opportunity to prove the big ticket's claim that Ronnie was superior to him. Therefore, he was never able to show that his team was correct. A vehicle accident left him with a broken neck, and his lackluster academic performance prevented him from playing for a Division I school and subsequently making it into the pros. The same reason why KG skipped college. Dubbed as the big ticket, KG is the main reason why the Timberwolves sold seats, but also played straight to the NBA. You want to know who the player skipped college for the NBA? Let me know in the comment section down below. Number 5. Dimitris Diamantidis Accolades 6-time Greek League MVP EuroLeague all-time leader in assists and steals During his whole 12-year professional career, Dimitris Diamantidis was only ever a member of one team, Panathinaikos Athens. During those 12 years, this guy amassed a whopping 9 Greek League titles and won a stunning 6 Greek League Most Valuable Player awards. He was named MVP in 50% of his seasons. He holds the record for the most assists and steals in the history of the EuroLeague. Additionally, in 2007, he was honored as the Greek Athlete of the Year. They didn't really realize how amazing he was going to be at that moment, thus he went undrafted in the 2002 draft. However, people now know how great he is going to be. Dimitris, who is 6 feet and 5 inches tall, was once regarded as the most versatile player in Europe and is now regarded as one of the all-time greats in Europe. Diamantidis could play the first three positions offensively and defensively, making him a complete all-round player. He played basketball in a truly unselfish manner, always looking out for his teammates and focusing on doing the little things correctly. Although he rarely made dazzling passes or dribbling combinations, his trophy cabinet is one of the largest in all of Europe. Diamantidis' speed, height, and wingspan allowed him to defend the top perimeter players on each squad. The Greek player understood how to face guard and not let small forwards get the ball. He could steal entry passes to the post and was hard to defeat one-on-one. -on -one. His team defense was better. The playmaker was outstanding at placing himself on the court when needed. He always arrived in time or even earlier, resulting in a steal. Even six years after he ended his career, Demetrius is still number one in all-time EuroLeague steals record with a considerable lead over the second place. Diamantidis' court impact made him one of the most decorated players ever. His defensive talents, savvy offensive play, and efficient shooting would have helped numerous NBA teams. It's a shame fans never got to witness him on the biggest platform. He was selected for the EuroLeague All-Decade Team for the period of 2001 to 2010 and was honored as a EuroLeague basketball legend in 2016. Now 42 years old, he hung up his boots in 2016. Number 4. Nikos Gallus Accolades FIBA Hall of Famer, 5-time Greek League MVP, 2017 Basketball Hall of Fame inductee 
Even though Dimitris Diamantidis earned one more Greek League MVP award than Nikos Gallus, Nikos Gallus is widely regarded as having been one of the most prolific scorers in the history of basketball in Europe. Gallus possessed the mindset of an all-time great scorer, and his offensive game was flawless in every way. Throughout his whole career, he had a scoring average of 31.2 points per game. He spent 11 years as the scoring champion of the Greek League and won the league championship a total of eight times during that period. In 2007, Gallus was recognized by FIBA for his accomplishments and entered the Hall of Fame. Gallus rejected contract offers from the Celtics and the Nets since, at the time, FIBA did not let players from the NBA teams compete for their country's national team. Despite this, he was offered a contract by both teams. Gallus was selected for induction into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2017. Gallus is considered to be on par with the gods of Greek basketball. Urban legend has it that he once dropped 50 on MJ. Gallus, at 6'1", had to find ways to score against larger opponents and powerful defenses who knew he was the one to stop. Gallus had a traditional but highly effective mid-range shot that created the impression of Gallus hanging in the air for an additional second. Also, he has a powerful physique, excellent reflexes, and a high level of athleticism. Quite the potent attacking power when combined. Gallus excelled in making difficult off-balance shots count. Number 3. Oscar Schmidt Accolades 2010 FIBA Hall of Fame inductee Named to FIBA's 50 Greatest Player List Oscar Schmidt is the Michael Jordan of the international basketball scene. He stood 6 foot 8 inches tall and had excellent shooting ability. It's not for nothing that this man is known as Mao Santa, also known as the Holy Land. The Brazilian superstar played the game for a total of 26 years, from 1974 to 2003, tallying a total of 49,703 points, which is about 11,000 more than Kareem scored. He also holds the record for the most points scored in an Olympic game with 55, and he scored damn near 30 points in each of the games he played during his Olympic career. Oscar was presented with several opportunities to play in the league. Nevertheless, he opted to keep his status as an amateur in order to be able to play for the Brazilian national team. As you may know, players who turned professional were not allowed to represent their country at the Olympics. For Schmidt, his love for Brazil always came ahead of anything else. He once scored 46 points in a Pan Am game against a U.S. squad that featured David Robinson, Danny Manning, and Purvis Ellison. Brazil ended up winning the game 120-115 to after being behind 68-54 at the half. Some people think that Schmidt had a problem with the way European players were stereotyped as the sixth man. Players such as Tony Kukoc, Rick Smits, and Detlef Schramm, to mention just a few, were among the brightest European prospects in the 1980s. Nonetheless, they spent most of their careers coming off the bench for their respective teams. Oscar Schmidt, being the star that he was, did not appreciate the thought of coming off the bench. Oscar Schmidt was, without a doubt, an early adopter of and one of the best advocates for today's style of basketball. And beyond that, he was a national hero whose achievements elevated his country's basketball status internationally. Many Brazilian basketball players, including Nene, Leandro Barbosa, and Thiago Splitter, owe a great deal to Schmidt for opening doors to the NBA. Number 2. Richard Peewee Kirkland Accolades New York City Streetball Legend Remember in Clips' song, Grindin', when Pusha T said, Legend in two games like a Pee Wee Kirkland? This is who he was referring to. Richard Pee Wee Kirkland was a drug trafficker, a streetball legend from Harlem in the 1960s and 70s. He played at Norfolk State in college. Pee Wee Kirkland made tens of millions of dollars in the dope game and was often called the Bank of Harlem or Al Capone with a crossover. It is well known that he rejected a deal with the Chicago Bulls because he was able to earn more money by working as a hustler. According to urban legend, Kirkland was the player who successfully completed the first crossover and spin to the hoop. Pee Wee Kirkland would show up in a Rolls Royce or Ferrari to play games at Rucker Park and play one-on-one -on -one games for $1,000 to $10,000. During his stay in jail, he had a handful of victories in various prison leagues in which he scored more than 100 points. When he was playing for Norfolk State, he was hailed as the quickest guy in college basketball by Sports Illustrated. This was around the time when he was being recruited by coaches like John Wooden and Red Holzman. However, 
He was too involved in the mafia scene at UCLA to take advantage of the opportunity to play with Kareem there. Kirkland was nearly impossible to defeat in any way. Pee Wee may have become an outstanding NBA player if he had gone in a different direction with his life. He was featured in the documentary Doing It in the Park in 2012, and he currently travels the country giving speeches to young people. And before we reveal the number one player on our list, comment down below if you'd like to see part two of this video. A lot of great interesting stories about why famous players never play in the NBA. Now for our number one spot on our list. That's right, number one, Len Bias. Accolades. ACC Athlete of the Year 1986, ACC Player of the Year 1985 to the 1986 season. Maryland got all it could have asked for in Len Bias. During his senior season, Bias was named as a first team All-American and scored 23 points per game while also pulling down seven rebounds each contest. He won the ACC Player of the Year award, not once, but twice. Bias was selected second overall in the 1986 NBA Draft by the Boston Celtics, who were then the defending champions of the NBA. However, he was discovered dead in his dorm room at the University of Maryland from an overdose of cocaine just one day after being selected when he was 22 years old. Sources said Bias passed a physical, including a urine analysis to test for drugs, administered May 27th by the Boston Celtics, who made him the number two overall pick in the National Basketball Association draft. Bias showed no sign of a heart ailment in yearly team physicals, including a special study to look for a hidden heart disease, and no evidence of drug use in urine tests, according to University of Maryland physicians. Many people feel that because Bias possessed a unique combination of talent and athleticism, he would have been able to assist the Celtics in continuing their streak of appearances in NBA Finals throughout the 1980s. He was profiled in the 30 for 30 without Bias episode from 2009. Bias remains the missing piece of a defining era in NBA history. After the Lakers and Celtics dominated the 1980s, the Bulls won six titles in the 1990s, with Jordan emerging as probably the greatest player of all time. The Bulls took shots from the Pistons, Knicks, Magic, and Pacers, but the Celtics may have remained at or near the top with bias in the mix. We hope you enjoyed the video topic today. Subscribe to our channel, Full Court. For more interesting basketball topics.